All right, welcome back to Adobe Illustrator CC. In this tutorial, we're gonna cover grouping, uh, moving objects back and forth in the stacking order, and isolation mode. So we're gonna cover three quick little things here. You can see here I have some shapes on the stage here. Here's a, more of a regular one. And you can see it's kind of linked to this other one as I move it around with the black arrow tool here. That means it's a group, and you can see that in the Properties tab, it says Group here. If I click on this shape, it just says Rectangle. And if I click on this one, it says Rectangle. If I draw another uh, shape, for example, an ellipse here, maybe a circle, you'll see it says ellipse here. And so um, right now, if it's an individual object, you can see uh, that it says that versus the group. And so what makes a group? A group is basically, uh, you can kind of think of it like a temporary container for the objects to be aligned. And you can see they move as one unit. So uh, I basically cannot isolate the ob one object without the other without going to what's known as isolation mode. And the way you group things, if I put these ties together here, I can create a group with all of these here. I can select everything with the black arrow. And then I can go up here to the object menu and choose group. There's a hotkey control G. There's also this uh, ungroup. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, control G. And you'll see as I click on any of these objects here, they move as one now. Now, if I double click into this, I'll go into what's known as isolation mode. And I can now move this group, which is separate than these individual parts. Remember, I grouped these two first uh, off camera, so to speak. They were already grouped. And then these two are individual pieces here, the rectangle and the ellipse. So again, I can reposition these however I want. What if I want to reposition these two and separate them out? Right now, they're a group also. Well, again, I can go into isolation mode. So I can double click on this and I can reposition this shape however I want here. And then to get out of it, all I have to do is double click out. You can see that action up here in the top. If I double click on it, you can see it's I'm going to the group. And again, um, in the properties tab, if you select it, you'll see you're in the group. And then if you double click, you'll see that you are um, isolating that actual individual path. So again, um, double click to go out. And now all these move as one group. So what are the point of groups versus uh, individual objects like this one? Well, let me show you. So say I want to use the eraser tool and I come over here and I erase this, this shape here and I erase this and I erase that. You can see it's erasing everything there. I'm gonna undo that action. But if I select something, so if I grab the black arrow and select this group here and use the eraser tool, again, um, I can you know come in here <laughs> and pretty much do the same thing. I can erase everything. So it really doesn't have anything to do with that, except that I can go into isolation mode. So if I wanna erase basically this shape without erasing this shape, I can double click and isolate this shape here, go into the eraser tool here and make some cuts or erases, make it like Swiss cheese or something, right? You know, cut away a little bit more here. And then I can click on the black arrow, double click out, and you can see that I haven't touched the shape behind it. And then I can double click some more and I still have this group. So groups allow it to arrange things and then isolation allows you to basically um, connect them. Now in terms of the layer stack order here, if we go to the layers tab next to the properties tab and open up the arrow, you'll see the group. The group is here and you'll see this other rectangle. So it does help with organization because that group is now in here. Without the group, it would look like all these different individual parts here. In fact, let's try it. Let's select all this now and ungroup. So I'll go to object, ungroup, and you can see it's expanding outwards, right? So now I have this group. I can go to select and our object again and ungroup. Again, that has a hotkey of uh, shift control G to, to ungroup. Now they're just individual uh, paths. You can see here I have the ellipse, the rectangle, the path, path, and rectangle. And um, basically I can move around however I want. Now what if I wanna move one behind the other? That's an arrangement. So you can see here, this path is selected with a little blue rectangle. In fact, if I collapse this into one layer, you can see all the blue dot here. Now, if I add a new layer here, I'll click on the new layer tab next to the trash can here. I can move this blue dot to the top and drag upwards. And what I have done essentially is move this shape into its own group. You'll know this by turning off the visibility of the other layer and you can see what has happened there. So that's one way to stack things, right? I can move one thing on there and then basically I could drag the entire layer below the other one 
and move it down. There is a much easier way though to do this. You can actually move inside the actual stacking order. So you don't have to actually have to create layers to do this. Let me turn off the visibility of this layer or this layer here and just focus on this one, which has these uh, objects here. You can see I've got several objects here and I'll kind of stack them in a way. Let me change the color maybe of this one uh, just so this will be a little bit easier to see. I'll give it a fill of a different shade of gray maybe. Let's see, um, maybe a darker gray. There we go. And then click out. So now if I click on this and go to my layers tab here, you can see the different uh, paths, different shapes here. You got the ellipse, the rectangle, the path, and the rectangle here. And you can click on each of these little circles and you'll notice that they're selecting each of these shapes. So you could do it this way. You could grab one of these and basically then grab the blue icon and drag it down. And that would essentially drag it below the other layer. So that's essentially what happened here. The black circle is now below this uh, dark circle, our dark rectangle. And you can kind of tell there, if I, if I change the property of the stroke here to say a, um, like a white stroke, you can kind of see this a little easier. And you can see that now that one is in front of the other one. What I like to do instead of dragging up and down these guys is using the hotkey of right click arrange and you can bring to front, bring forward or backward or all the way to the back. So these two, the send to back and send to front is like bringing it all the way to the front or all the way to the back. The bring forward and send backward are basically in steps. So we have four steps here essentially. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the top one and then I will show you how this works. You can see they have hotkeys control in the left and right bracket and then shift control J to bring it all the way back. So again, I'm gonna select this little circle, which is this top rectangle here, and then hit control, and then left bracket or right bracket. So you can see the blue square is now going down and down and down. And you notice it's not gonna go below layer uh, one, it's not gonna go layer two. Then I can hit control and right bracket and go all the way up. So again, I can hit that control shift left bracket and that will send all the way down, or control shift right bracket and that'll bring it all the way up in the stacking order. Again, just kind of focusing on these four shapes here and how they're popping up and down. So again, that's control left bracket to move it down or right bracket to move back up. So that's essentially grouping, isolation mode, and uh, arranging objects basically by moving them back and forth in the path. In the end, you know, you can always use layers, like I could add a new layer here. I could drop it below all these other layers and draw a rectangle for the entire background of this scene here. So I could draw a, a whole rectangle here of black, for example, or I could go to the properties and change its fill to whatever color I want. Uh, for example, 50% gray, which is this one here. So until next time, uh, see you soon in Adobe Illustrator. Cheers.